Hello again. I just wanted to take the time right now to thank you all for coming over to the channel and to be commenting and liking and subscribing. It really means a lot to me. And I appreciate those of you who have been going over to the, the shop page on my website. All of the products that I'm putting on there are products that I've tried and I've done and I believe in so that you can uh, trust what you're getting is something that I've, I've vetted very well. I appreciate that. I don't. I know there's a lot of things out there that people can get, but I, I want to be sure that the products that I do offer are things that are going to work, at least for the majority of you. So the other thing I wanted to say is I'm really excited that so much of my content is appreciated by so many of you. Um, I love the comments and I do like to comment back and I know some of you are maybe a little bit in disagreement with me on certain things, but that's okay because part of my mission here is not only to show you body work and show you things to do and get you more in touch with your body and your your inner self and work through a lot of these things so you can step into the power that you have but a lot of it is helping you to sort through the different things that you've maybe been told and taught for a long time and it gets kind of confusing to hear another point of view but we're all moving and we're all growing and that's what it what I'm here for and I so I just want to say thank you all so much for for doing that. I would like to be able to put out more content. Uh, Gus and I are working really hard to do that and we both have to work in other places. So we're, we're toying with the idea of po possibly putting up a donation page so that we can get a little bit of help so we can put more videos out here. And I do appreciate when you have suggestions, especially for the body work, because it helps me to get somebody in here and I can show you how the techniques that I use that are very helpful and very efficient for helping to correct and move people a little bit out of pain and to move them out of discomfort and to help them understand what they need in order to be healthy. Well today I'm going to work on a couple of things with Diana on the neck and showing some different things with the neck which was a request by one of the viewers to have me show how to work with a stiff neck, a sore neck, or pinched nerves in a neck. And uh, Diana has a little issue that we've been working on that goes down her shoulder, so we'll be also able to work a little bit in the shoulder area, and I can show you some things that we're doing to help that. One of the things, she'll probably be able to explain it better, but one of the things when we worked on her foot, she did feel some sensation up in her shoulder area as that was being corrected. And there's other things that's happening in with her in that situation so I'll let her share with you that at the end of the video so right. without further ado I will get started on the neck there was a request um, on one of the videos for me to show you about um, the neck issues that there's different neck issues and I know that necks are really out there <laughs> and they hurt a lot so I'm going to show you some of the things that I do with necks. I know there's other things out there, but this is going to be a little more showing the subtle anatomy with the necks and neck issues. Necks oftentimes go into the shoulders because there's a lot of attachments that come in from the shoulders and tie into the neck in different ways and directions. The neck has a lot of range of motion, you know, it moves side to side, it moves forward and backward, it moves la like these side bending sort of things, so there's rotation and forward backward, and so there's a lot of muscles in there that are really tricky to figure out, you know, exactly which one is holding everything down. There's another thing to consider is the alignment of the bones as far as the neck problems, especially when you're getting into shooting pain. Um, so what I do is I just usually just assess it a little bit by just feeling if there's any knots or any hard places and after a while you can feel quickly where there's maybe a problem with a muscle. And this all feels pretty good. Um, She's not really injured too badly in the neck, so I'm not really showing a neck injury, except there is a little bit going on with her shoulder and tying into the neck. So what I'm going to do here is um, my fingers are going to be 
holding her with these two fingers, one on each side of the vertebrae going down the middle. And right at the occipital base, so let me see if I can get her head to turn. So the hands will be placed in here like so, and then the, her head will be resting like that. And I'm gonna be pulling upward. So these fingers here are right at the edge of the, of the bone right at the very edge of the bone. The spine is coming up in the middle and then w one finger on each side and then I'm going to cradle her head and the fingers are going to be bent a little bit like so so that the they're aiming towards her eyes and I prefer to use my other hand with this. So I've got my fingers curled under there. They're curled and She's, her head is just like nested in my hand. And what I do here is I slowly take my fingers very slowly and let the head sink in, the neck sink in. I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing in. I'm waiting for the muscle to relax and sink down into the fingers. My fingers are curved enough pointing at the eyes it's a little bit like a mini occipital base release. Once the muscles soften at the base of the skull, then you take the fingers and apply a really light uh, traction where you're pulling upward. You, you go deep enough to where you're actually accessing the, um, the dural tube. And you can't really feel that, so it's a more of an energetic um, holding onto it. And then you pull uh, with a little traction, just pull and let that stretch there. And then you can take your other hand and place it along the vertebrae there and just support it, support the neck as you're giving that little bit of traction. And then you can also feel that your hand is like, the head is being pulled a little bit this direction, but you're not like pulling, it's all very, 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 very subtle. And I sometimes will hold that and I will check the positioning of the cranial bones with my other hand, just uh, like a massive global kind of feel of what's happening. Because it's my idea and thoughts that the position of the head bones does play quite a bit into the, uh, into the neck. In, in some a little bit more direct than others, but I just think that there's a, a, a difference there because I've seen people come in with bad necks and all I've done is worked on their head and their neck is flowing a lot better. So the dural tube and that whole system, in my opinion, from my experience, has a lot to do with the condition of the neck. So I'm just checking this and I'm gonna be putting my other hand there on this side and I'm just putting both hands underneath her because it's softer and I'm going to lift this up into an occipital base release because you want all these muscles right up where it attaches right up next to the, uh, the head. You want that really, really, really relaxed in there. So I'm just going to hold her there now, if you're doing this hold on somebody, one of the things you want to be careful of is that you have fairly short fingernails <laughs> because it's hard to bend back on the pads of the fingers when the nails are long. So just be mindful of that. Um, I know there's been times I thought my fingers were cut short enough and they really weren't and it's a little bit uh, sharp to do this that way. It wasn't like anything that was really overly painful, but it's just something that I prefer not to do. And then her head has been released, so I'm going to be pulling that neck long and then doing that lift from up and back position that we've done. It's that up and back position, so I'm pull getting her head by giving a little traction on it, kind of pulling it and then that up and back feeling so I'm focused right on the up and back place 
which is the upper part of the neck right at the base of the skull. That's where you lift up and back. And we're going to feel that traction and then to keep her head and neck long, it's most people need to be on a little bit of a lift because they tend to lean backwards with their head and we don't want that. So I think that's one of the most important positions to get to right off the bat is to get that neck nice and long and then you can feel what's happening with these muscles. Now what I'm feeling here is I'm feeling a little bit more tension that's over on the right side and that happens to be the side that she has a little bit more of a problem with her uh, shoulder and it is definitely detected right here at about C3 and C4. Um, a lot of muscle tension right along there. So to, uh, to alleviate some of that, the next thing to do is to take the hand and just rest it. I'm going to just take my fingers like this and rest it on that spot next to the spine. And it's like lifting the table up to the neck. So it's, I'm not putting any pressure. I'm going to do it on both sides because I want it to be symmetrical. But it's like bringing the table up to that neck and then just letting it sit there and you just hold it really gently until you feel it sinking down into the, the hands and the fingers. Because when you do it slowly like this, the, her brain will be able to pick up another neural pathway. There's a different muscle memory patterning that can happen because it's happening slow enough, giving an option to the brain and to the movement and to the positioning so that there's an option for it to go. And this is something that I've just kind of done and it seems to work. I'm sure there are modalities out there that do things very similar because there's just so much you can do. So I would say, you know, if you're looking at for things, just play with the different things that you learn and see what works. I will tell you though that it, the less that you put pressure into the body, the more you're going to get out of it in most cases. It's less is more. It's just, this works that way. And here you can see I'm also going in and holding a little bit farther out on these muscles that are attaching into, it's a trapezius and levator, that are attaching into the neck so that they, that side of the muscle, that attachment can also relax to let the entire uh, from origin to insertion relax. And here I'm feeling now in this part of the kind of the lower neck, upper back, um, it feels like there's kind of a little squirming going around when the muscles begin to get activated. They feel like they're kind of squirmy and then they start to relax and sink in. This is very relaxing. Sometimes when you do this, you're going to see jumps going on down all the way down to the feet or one whole side of the body might let go. There's just a lot of different things that happen. And you just, it's similar in some regard. And then yet at the same time, it's very different with people. And her, she had a real flutter over here on the left side. Move that up a little bit higher now into the neck. And yeah, the muscles now more superficially are way different and going in deeper. Okay, this right side now is softer. It doesn't feel as knotted. It still has a little bit ways to go, but that might be part of the shoulder issue. Okay, and then, so that is, that's how I will start out working the neck and then I constantly uh, check the rotation. I don't go far with it. The other thing you want to do is be sure that you cradle the head. So if you're going to be stretching the neck at the same time, be sure that you're laying the head on your arm, on your forearm, and then you can kind of sweep it up and move your hand up. That's, it's real important to make sure that you're 
client feels, you know, well safe and not, you're not going to bounce her head around and or put it in a position where they feel like they have to work the muscles and activate muscles to hold. You want everything to be really relaxing. When they have to work a muscle, then you're activating that muscle. It's going to be a little bit harder to get into it because it's working to hold. And here I'm just checking. I've got one hand under her head, the other hand more under the neck. So then the next part of it is to check the muscles itself. So I'm going to roll that to the side and just check these back muscles. I'm getting deeper in. I don't want to pull her skin. And I'm going to start up here at the origin and just work down each little strand of muscle here. Just move it from origin to insertion, going alongside each other. And it feels real good. You know, a lot of massage therapists, when they're working the body, they, they don't really go from origin to insertion, and it feels like kind of a halfway job. So if you're doing massage therapy, please think about the origins and insertions and do the best you can to make sure that you're working that entire muscle. And then along here, the sternocleomastoid muscle here. So then we can bring this head back and you can see where the sternocleomastoid is. Okay, we're going to go in here and grab this a little bit and just kind of work this muscle here. And kind of grab again. So here's that muscle. And that, and then the same thing on the other side. This is feeling pretty good. And up. This goes up to the mastoid process. And then we can check the position of the larynx and the um, thyroid. And you can rock that back and forth. If you're a little lower on that, you're more on the uh, thyroid. So you can give a little rock back and forth. And then you can also check the positioning by lifting kind of upward. And then you can rock it opposite. This is all to loosen up tissue. It's very soft done. I mean, this is a delicate place on the body. And if it was done with any kind of deeper pressure, she wouldn't be able to lay there because automatically there's a kind of a reaction to protect our neck. So I'm just going to do that a little lymph work, draining a little lymph. And then the sides of the, of the neck along here, we're getting back into the trapezius. Here's the trapezius. So we're getting back into there a little bit. And then we're going to just check to see how soft it is as we just rest that, bring that table up to the area. I'm going to go a little more on the lower neck. And just see what that feels like. It's very relaxed. And it's, it's maneuvering into different positioning. I'm very light on this one now. I've moved blood to, through the muscles with a little bit more of that massage work, a little bit deeper work, and now I'm going back and checking, and the muscle is definitely relaxing more. It seems like it is happier. <laughs> and then let me feel what's... And along the vertebrae now, it's almost... I can barely feel where it was harder before little tiny bit there and where I was really big it's not there anymore there's just a little bit of um, tension and this is about C5 about C5 C4 or 5 so and it's just or it's still soft it just feels like it's a little bit more swollen maybe kind of that it's hard to 
it's not really swollen, but it just feels like it's still got a little knot in it. But it's very smooth, and now this time it feels really smooth going up. It's not quite the same as the other. It's the right side. She probably works a little more with the right side, so that is soft enough that I think it's probably just a little bit more developed of a muscle. And it might be a little bit... At any rate, yeah, it's feeling like it's in a better position than before. Okay, now we're going to just check the range of motion. So you want to, uh, the range of motion, it, I always like to have a little bit of traction with range of motion, so I'm putting my hands like I did at first, where she's cradled, and I'm holding onto the occipital base, and then I'm, my other hand is on her neck, and I'm going to be tractioning that a little bit toward me, just a little tiny bit, to put space in the vertebrae as we turn it to the side. And and then I like to give a little pull. Um, it's not really a pull, it's more of a stretch, and then come to the other side and let my fingers ride up that side as I'm pulling. And then I'm going to do it again on this side. So this is the, the back and forth, the rotation. And then we're going to do the side bending where you're also the same positioning, but you're turning the head a little more to the side. And you can keep the same hand under there. So you're moving it side to side. Notice if you can see my body's going with it. It's easier on me. And then the other one is a forward pull, a forward stretch where you can pull your fingers, pull it up and up. And now I'm going to place my hand underneath the neck and I'm going to lift that up and drop it down holding the neck up. So it feels like there's kind of a stretch going that way. It doesn't look like much, but it feels a lot different because I'm supporting that neck there, just letting the top part of the head drop. And then again to the side and stretching it. She's got a pretty good length without the support. With the support, it's holding up and back. And there we have it. So there's some stuff this would help with. If you're pinching a nerve, that's gonna, more, more than likely, it's gonna come out of the vertebrae. So there might be other work you have to do with that, with, a, with maybe chiropractic. Sometimes it, the pinched nerve is just muscles that are real tight. And so if it's that, then you'll work that out. Um, sore necks, all that kind of stuff, you can work it. But like I say, necks are kind of tricky. So sometimes you have to get down deeper into the shoulder and sometimes you just have to work with it for a while because there's so much involved in the neck. So that was incredibly relaxing. Um, I was having a little pain and discomfort in my shoulder, a little instability in my shoulder and as she always does, uh, Dana seems to use her intuition and skills to find out where the problem is. And I try not to elaborate too much when I'm talking to her about it because I don't want her to focus too much on what I'm saying and forego using her own intuition. But the area that she spoke about on the right side of my neck, I immediately knew that that had to do with the discomfort I was having in my right shoulder. And I didn't really feel anything going on as it was releasing. But when she went back to it, I could feel that the tension that she had found before was not there. I think when she first touched it, it almost didn't register with me as there was anything there going on. I almost couldn't feel her touch. But then as everything softened, um, everything felt balanced and I had more awareness of all the sensations that, uh, that she was causing wherever she would touch me. So that was really good. I almost fell asleep at the end. And um, the thing that she did at the beginning, I guess she called it an occipital pull, is one of my very favorite things that I always look forward to when Athena is going to be working on me. Um, it just 
sets my head and neck together in such a way that feels really, really good and makes me feel long and tall. And um, you might try that, have someone try it on you and, and see what you think of it. It's one of my favorites. So I hope you enjoy doing the work as much as I enjoy receiving it. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. And I think there's a little bell up there that you can hit that you'll get a notification every time we post. So if you want to, you can hit that too. But thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it.